Isaiah 55 and verse 2 says something to the effect of, listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear yeah, that your soul may live. <sighs> Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So that's just an appetizer. That's not what I really want to speak about, but you can't be on Isaiah 55 and not read, incline your ear to me, come to me, hear that your soul may live. Because that's what the Word does when you come into contact with the Word. Stuff starts living again. Stuff starts living again. And you're feeling yourself getting all excited. So this is what I actually wanted to read. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and it shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So that's just to lay the basis of what is the word and who is the word and why have we got this big reverence for the word. Because when God talks about his word, he says, it will not return to me void. It will do the thing that I desire and it will be prosperous in the thing where unto I send it. So that already gets me excited. God watches over his word to perform it. And then uh, I want to link it this morning with Romans 8. Because like I said in my intro, just speaking a scripture off the top of your head sometimes does not have the intended results. Sometimes it sounds more like a lang, a lang, a lang, a lang, a lang than the power that the word truly possesses. And the problem is not with the word. The word is alive and active. The word can do what it claims to be able to do. Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> so, so Romans 8 in verse 5 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So, how on earth do you get to Romans 8 from Isaiah 55? Uh, quite, quite easily. When we touch the word, we leave the natural behind. It's a different dimension. So, when Yaku came here with his CD and his paper, again, I got all excited because it's exactly that. The natural man cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. And that is sad enough, but if you think that the natural mind is hostility to God, now it starts getting serious. So, we need to get God's word. And we need to let it drop in our hearts. Remember the word is a seed. Can you still remember the sower went out to sow the seed, the word? Some fell here, some fell there. But the moral of the story is the word is a seed. So when it comes to you, sometimes it's, it's insignificant. You have a huge problem, and now somebody gives you a scripture. Like, how on earth is this scripture going to fix my problem? But if you are meek and gentle, if you are humble enough to receive the word and allow it into your heart, your heart is your garden. So whatever seeds go in here, they grow. But if you've ever planted any seed, you've got to stick with it. You've got to water that seed. My wife and I, we love to plant vegetables, but we plant it in the following way. We plant it, and then we leave, and we come back after a month, and there's still nothing. So that's not the way to handle a seed. <laughs> the word is a seed. The word is seed. The word is seed. So how do we stick with it? How do you watch over that seed? How do you watch over that seed? You've received. It fell in your heart. You know God spoke to you this morning. You've been touched. 
but now you're going to exit those doors. What are you going to do with that seed? That seed has got to grow, and it's got to produce. And Uncle Kobus always said, anybody can count the seed in an apple, but nobody can count the apples in a seed. So who knows what the word that you receive this morning is going to produce. It's got the ability to do whatever, whatever. So the way we tend to the seed, Paul writes and he says, we having the same spirit of faith as it is written, I have believed, therefore I have spoken, therefore we also believe and we do speak. So if you receive the word, you receive it because you have believed it. But there's going to come a time where as that seed is growing, you're going to have to be, become intimate with that seed. You're going to have to close the door behind you some other time and be intimate with that seed. And you've got to allow that seed to touch you and to speak to you. And as you come out, that seed must come off your lips. The promise that seed promises will have to somehow Start coming off your lips. The funny thing I've noticed about people is uh, uh, we love talking. We love talking. But nobody ever tells you they saw a unicorn today, a pink one. It was eating the grass outside there. Nobody does that because it's not true. And people will laugh at you. But people do say things that are not true. And you know it's not true. The only problem is they know. They don't know it's not true. Like with uh, the social media and whatever, some from time to time I get WhatsApps and then the WhatsApp would say stuff that you have to go fact check, fact check it. It's, it's, it's well written and it almost looks like the truth. Until you go fact check it, then you see, oh goodness, Celine Dion is not dead. Okay, so that was a lie. The problem is the person who sent you that WhatsApp truly believes that. So what am I getting at? We speak what we believe. As humans, we speak what we believe. Even if it is silly stuff, you still say it because you don't know you silly. You don't know it's a lie. You don't know it's nonsense. You speak it because you believe it's the truth. If you don't believe me, just go have your hair cut this week. Then you sit there and you listen to what the people are talking about. Then you'll tell me, okay, it's true. People do say stuff. It's silly stuff, but they believe it. So if the word is not on our lips, then I want to ask myself, Eric, why is it not on your lips? Why is it not on your lips? Have you forgotten to be intimate with the word? Haven't you received anything lately? Why is the word not on your lips? And it also doesn't help to just grab a scripture that says, my God shall supply all my needs. Or it doesn't help you to just grab a scripture that says, I can do all things by Christ who strengthens me. If that worked, my son would be very happy. He's writing mathematics in the week. And that will not help him. He'll have to open a book and study. And while studying, if that word is alive in him and he's having difficulty, he will obviously quote that word and says, man, listen, this algebra is not going to get the better of me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe. Thank you, Jesus, for your help. I believe. And there will be a different result. But not studying and then sitting in the classroom and saying, I can do all things. Yeah, your teacher is going to empty a red pen on your paper. We're having the same spirit of faith. Faith. What has faith got to do with speaking the word? Hebrews 11 teaches us that Enoch pleased God. He received confirmation that he pleased God and he was no more. And then it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because those who go to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I can once again remember Uncle Kobus teaching us the Hebrew word halak, conversing, you know, Enoch. How did he please God? He pleased God by talking to God. So I'm sure he didn't ask him, how's the weather? <laughs> Maybe he was confessing God's word back to him. The fact is, God saw it as faith. Whatever Enoch was speaking to him, God saw it as faith. Because that same verse says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So somewhere in his talking, God must have recognized there's faith there. And it pleased him a lot because we have the testimony of Enoch that he pleased God and he was no more. So this speaking thing, this speaking thing is just, is just awesome. So I just want to recap. Whenever we touch the word, we leave the plane of the natural. We enter the spiritual. 
The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. They cannot. They cannot. So you, your confession is not so much for the benefit of other people, although it can benefit other people if you're in the right crowd. People who appreciate the Word will never stop you from saying the Word, confessing the Word. They will agree with you. There will be agreement. But we also got to know not to throw our pearls before the pig. So as I'm saying, many things are coming out, and you got to start hearing that we need the Holy Ghost here. We need the Spirit's guidance, and we need Him to stir the Word that is already on the inside of us. But if there's nothing in there, what on earth is He going to stir? If you face some hard times and calamities, what is He going to stir? And we've seen the things that can be stirred, but I'm not talking about them. I mean, if, if you have allowed the Word of God to dwell richly in you like Colossians admonishes us, then there's something for the Holy Ghost to stir. So I'm not talking about just walking in the aisles and saying, I can do, I can do, I have, I we, I wa, I wa. I wanted to read James 4, but I thought, no man, these people will think you hate them. But you know, James 4 says, we shouldn't be envious. We shouldn't be jealous. We shouldn't hate one another. We should ask. But if we ask, we must make sure that we ask correctly because uh, if we ask just to consume it on our own lusts, then uh, don't be surprised if you're not going to get it. And then he calls them ugly stuff, evildoers. And all. It's outside the kingdom. So if you're sitting here this morning and you, you're hearing me saying, you can go out and say, I have the BMW 7 Series, it's mine. That's not what I'm saying. It, it's pastors. He will have that infinity BMW or something he's always talking about. But that's not what I'm referring to this morning. The Holy Ghost needs something to quicken on the inside of us. And when he starts quickening it, words are going to come out of your mouth. Stuff is going to come out. And the other thing I was just thinking about in the worship, you don't plant a seed today and you harvest it tomorrow. You've got to spend time with that seed. You've got to get familiar with that seed. And the thing that is so funny, as I was meditating on the Word this morning and thinking about Scriptures, and like Yaku said, I didn't want to just come up here and give all the Scriptures. There's been decades of Word of Faith preaching. It's easy to give you all the Scriptures, but I didn't want to do that. I said, Lord, can we not have something fresh? Because I know and believe there is power in speaking your Word. Otherwise, the Bible would not record you having said, let there be light. It's important to have the word on our lips. It's important to say what we believe. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. The mouth is always going to speak. You can't keep the thing quiet. The mouth is always going to speak. And when you meet people for the first time, we all have our nice face mask and what have you, and you think it's like this when it's actually like this. But stick with somebody long enough, your mouth is going to betray you sooner or later. Your mouth is going to, it's worse than a naughty child. It will betray you. But we should let the word of God dwell richly in us. I hope I'm not losing you this morning. Bless God for his word. Bless God for his word. So there's an interesting scripture in Numbers where the Israelites get the instruction to go over into the promised land. And the spies come back and ten of them say, no ways, we are grasshoppers. And two say, if God said, then we can do it. Can you hear once again, confessing the word is more than just whatever we thought it was. The two spies said, if God said we can take the land, what on earth are we still doing here in the camp? Their defenses have left them. They will be breakfast for us. Let's go. The other said, there's no way. That CD cannot fit through that rectangle in the white paper. No matter how you try, it cannot fit through there. It's not going to work. So getting back to where I started, this is all spirit and life. It's all spirit and life. There's, there's no quick fix. It's not abracadabra. But the amazing thing about the word is once you start appreciating the word, reading the word, allowing the word to find entrance, it goes way past name it and claim it. Way, way, way. This is, you can't get away from this. It keeps you busy for hours on end. You're late for appointments when you don't set a, a reminder to get out of the bedroom. You have somewhere else to be. This is life. This is life, and it's got the ability to change everything about us. And the Word is designed to find entrance. If there's a hungry heart, the Word is designed to find entrance. 
It's not a difficult thing. God wants His Word to dwell richly in us. So then God answered those ten spies because their claim was that you want our little ones to go die between the giants. And then God said, okay, so tell them I will do to them exactly what they have spoken in my ears. We are once again back to if you, belie- if you st- start speaking your belief. So maybe the message should be what do we believe? But if you start speaking your belief, your true belief system, if you start speaking your belief system, stuff happens. God says, oh, tell them I'll do to them exactly what they have spoken in my ears. Their carcasses will fall in the desert and their little ones will go and have the joy and the pleasure and everything I promised them. I've heard, I heard what you said. I heard what you said. So once again, what we believe is always going to come out of our mouths. I think we had it the other way around. Our lusts caused us to pick nice scriptures and then we confess them, confess them, confess them, and nothing came of it because it's not your true belief system. <laughs> we, we were lusting after a couple of things and we were saying things and that magic didn't work. But God word, word, God's word always works. I just read you Isaiah 55. He said, it will never return to me void. It will never return to me void. Verse 13 of chapter 55 says, Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So the minute this word gets on your lips, even before it gets on your lips, the dangerous part is when this word finds entrance and you start meditating on it meditating and you start making it part of your life and you start sticking scriptures on your bedroom doors and on your fridge and wherever you go you got little little pieces of notes with scriptures on it when that starts to happen the thorn tree will become a cypress suppress forgive me it's a burki and instead of that other thorny bush will come up the myrtle so things start happening when we allow the word entrance into our heart. And I think that's just my encouragement to you this morning. And I, I, my prayer is really, Lord, bring new life in our fellowship. Bring new life in our congregation. Every person sitting here, Lord, let the beauty, the power, the majesty of your word, let it just be revived again. Let it be real to us. That when we do take your lips on our, your, your word on our lips, it produces, it satisfies, it nourishes. I want to quote Uncle Kobus again. He said, your thoughts create an atmosphere around you. So that's where the Romans 8 thing come in, you know. Whatever you are thinking, it can be stinking thinking or it can be Holy, lovely thinking. There will be an atmosphere around. He always used to say, some people, you ask them, how are you? And then you're very sorry for yourself that you did ask that question. But other people, you ask them, how are you? And then they don't answer the question. They just dive right into what God is busy doing for them. And you stand there for uh, half an hour listening to, how are you? And when you leave, you're like, I'm also much better now. Yeah, yeah. So your, your thoughts create an atmosphere around you, but then your words activate it in the spirit. Your words activate it. So anything believed but not spoken is not going to bear fruit for you. You all remember Romans 10 that says, with a heart we believe unto righteousness, but with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's got to be on our lips. His word has got to be on our lips. So if you would be so kind to just Go with me to Jeremiah 23, please. While we're on this topic of how are you, I heard a good joke there. When the, when the psychiatrists come together, apparently the conversation goes something like, you are good. How am I? <laughs> please tell me how am I. But in any case, if that one was too fast, or if I'm not the comedian, forgive me. Jeremiah 23. As I was preparing this message, I suddenly came upon scriptures that 
used to be very dear to me a couple of years ago. And it brought me through very, very, very difficult times. And I, I haven't read those scriptures three, four, five years. And the minute I read them, immediately, bam, 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 bam. There was no effort. It's like just riding a bicycle. You just get back on and you ride it. The minute I got in contact with those scriptures, all the power came back. All the emotions was there again. All the memories. It's like the word never dies. It never dies. So what I'm saying is, just because you don't daily say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Just because you don't do that daily does not mean he's not your shepherd and you shall not lack. It does not mean that. But if you have ever in your life been intimate with, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. If you've ever had that on the inside of you, if it ever took you through a whole Monday where things didn't go your way, and you kept on going back to, because the Lord is my shepherd, I'm going to give the next step. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I will not, become over, I will not be overcome with fear. I can do this. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. And there was a stage in your life when you needed it. And then the Lord is my shepherd went back on the shelf. And the next thing came along, you know. But once, whenever you in need again, and that same situation arise, it's as simple as, but the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You've been intimate with that scripture. Or any other scripture for that matter. So Jeremiah 23 says, let the, uh, let, let me just backtrack a little bit. It's the chapter where God is really upset with the prophets because all the prophets are prophesying lies and they're saying it's going gonna, it's gonna to be well with you. There will be no destruction to Jerusalem and there will be no captivity and what have you. And he's getting upset with us and then he, he gives a word. It says, for who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? This is uh, verse number 18. So the prophet is here talking about those prophets that are just prophesying nonsense, borrowing words from one another and prophesying stuff that God never commanded them to say. But to me, it was just striking how the Lord answered them. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? So if I can just say what it means to me. Before you start speaking, have you stood in his counsel? <laughs> have you listened? And obviously you cannot do that once the popo eats the fan. It's got to flow out of your lifestyle. That's why my prayer is, Lord, revive your word, your work in the midst of the years. Quicken us again according to your word, Lord. Let it be fresh again. Let it be life. Let it be full of vitality. And then what I really want to get to is verse 28. It says, let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat? And the amplified in brackets would say for nourishment. So God clearly distinguishes between that lang a lang a lang a lang confession and the one you've been intimate with, and is in you, and is quickened by the Holy Ghost. He distinguishes between those two. He says the one is straw, and the one is wheat. The one is for nourishment, and the other one, pff. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Once again, amplified the rock of most stubborn resistance. <laughs> so there is a word that can be on our lips that's going to be wheat. He's going to be for nourishment. He's going to be like a hammer. He's going to smash evil schemes and all the plans of the devil. He's going to smash it. All the stuff life brings our way. But there is something before that. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord? to see and to hear his word, who has paid attention to his word and listened. I can almost say amen. 
I can almost just say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. The last thing I just want to draw our attention to. Romans chapter 11, verse 34 and 35. I don't know about you, but as a father, I have two beautiful children. And their needs is almost foremost in my mind. Whenever I'm aware of their needs, I'm going to do everything in my ability to supply and to make sure they have what they need. And just because that's what good fathers do. It, and all fatherhood is from God, so he's the good father. He puts that in our hearts. So when we have kids, that's our heart towards our kids. But sometimes they ask for stuff that I can supply. But they ask it in such a way that I'm like, you can go on asking a little while longer. Maybe in all the asking, something about the attitude is going to change. Something about thankfulness is going to return to your heart in not this case of, you owe me ice cream. And we know it's never about ice cream. But you owe me this. Life is so unfair. Why? Why this? Then I just smile. I, I pretend like I don't hear. Or I just hug them and say, I hear you. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But once the attitude changes to one of thankfulness, and that, oh, daddy, don't you want to help me? My goodness, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. So just with that in mind, Romans 11 says, for, uh, I want to just quickly eat another translation. The Amplified says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, and who has understood his thoughts, or who has ever been his counselor? We know that answer is in Corinthians. But here's the next verse. Or who has first given God anything that he might be paid back, or that he could claim a recompense? <laughs> wow. Wow. Lord, thank you that you are alive and you watch over your word. So all I want to say is when we approach God with that word that is alive and active on the inside of us, that we love and that we have nourished and that we've been intimate with, if we approach him with that word on our lips and an attitude of, I know you don't owe me anything. You're not an insurance policy. I'm not going to abracadabra and then you've got to pay. Your word is alive on the inside of me. Oh, my Father. Oh, my Father. Oh, my Father. This pain that is troubling me. I do agree with you that by your stripes I'm healed. I do believe and I do confess. You did pay the price. You did say it is finished. And I thank you for the privilege and the honor to agree with your word. That by your stripes I'm healed. By your stripes I'm healed. Just in closing, Luke 5, verse 5, it always blesses me. Jesus is preaching to the crowd, and he sees the two boats, and whoever has seen Chosen will appreciate this now a lot more. He, get, he, he gets into one of the boats, it happens to belong to Simon, and then he asks Simon, just push out a little bit from the shore. And he teaches and then almost as a way of thank you, <laughs> he just turns to Simon and he says, now push out to the deep and lower your nets, Mr. Simon. And Simon says, Lord, are you kidding me? We've toiled all night. You saw us washing our nets there on the shore. We've toiled all night and we didn't catch a thing. But at thy word. But at thy word. But at thy word. But at thy word. This CD does not want to fit through this rectangle with my natural mind. It refuses to go in. But at your word. At your word. At your word. So we all know they, they brought forth that big, 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 large catch. God's word is forever settled in the heavens. And his faithfulness from generation to generation. So there's no way that in our generation the mercies of God has ceased. There's no way that in our generation, he does not respond to his word anymore. There's no way that in our generation, we are left helpless, without support. There's no way. He's faithful from generation to generation. 
So, um, Father, thank you. Thank you. Help us to grasp this message. Help us to be intimate with your word. Let your word find entrance in our hearts, Lord. We're desperately hungry for you. Not because you have never fed us, but because we have tasted and we have seen. It left us with a great desire to know you more, to see you more, to touch you, to be intimate with you and you alone, Lord. We love you. We love you. Thank you that you have given us your precious word and that it is alive and active on our inside. Thank you that we can agree with your word, that we can respond to your word, that we can be like Mary. Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Thank you that you are the one who told Jeremiah, you have seen rightly, for I am watching over my word to perform it. I'm always watching over my word to perform it. And Jeremiah, you know how I love my children. You know my giving heart. I even gave my only son. You know my giving heart. I'm always watching over my word to perform it. We thank you, Father. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen.